When you're packing lunches for school every day, when you're trying to have a healthy, easy work lunch option, it can be difficult, it can be challenging. It's really important to stay ahead of that and make ahead work and school lunches. I have got you covered. I'm gonna be sharing two crucial strategies and ideas for you to help you make that grab and go getting ready for lunch in the morning as easy as possible. I have been doing these for years. I eat a salad for lunch almost every single day, every week. And the weeks where I am disciplined and consistent with getting these prepared makes my life throughout the week so much easier and smoother. All I have to do is grab and go. I literally don't have to think about it. When it comes to school lunches, freezer PB&Js are a big favorite. And I'm gonna show you some important tips and tricks for making the perfect homemade freezer peanut butter and jelly. Let's get to making a mason jar salad. I'm gonna give you the order of operations, if you will, and the reason that we do that is to keep different foods from not touching each other or touching each other, and also to make it easy for when we are ready to add our salad to a bowl, you will see momentarily. So the first thing that we're gonna do, very bottom, is the dressing. The dressing is up to you. If it's me, I just do a thin little layer. If it's my brother, I would add that much. My brother has, it's the running joke in the family for years, has a little salad with his dressing, you know, whatever. So that's the first. The next is going to be your chunky ingredients. I'm doing a little bit of a, a Tex-Mex here. We're gonna add the chunky ingredients next. This would be things like corn, black beans, cooked diced chicken. If you have steak, it actually gives it that extra little bit of marinade and flavor to the meat as well. So the chunkier, heartier things are going to go in first. And then we would do softer items. Here's the two things that we don't want to touch. We do not want the lettuce and the dressing to touch each other because the dressing will make the lettuce soggy. And that's a pass for me. So that's why we're going to do it like this. Um, softer ingredients are gonna go in next. There's the only thing going in after that is going to be lighter ingredients like the lettuce, maybe the cheese. So, you know, if you were doing, I'm gonna do shredded cheese. I'm gonna do that here. A feta, a gorgonzola, blue cheese. This is a good layer for those softer ingredients. Um, softer salad ingredients, if you're doing like a, a citrusy theme, you could do like mandarin slices, things like that are going to be the softer. Just whatever ingredients you like in your salad, you can imagine which layer, layer they're gonna go into. Next, we are going to add the lettuce and we're going to medium pack it in there. Not lightly pack it, not pack it really well, but I wanna make sure we have enough lettuce in here so that we get a good hearty salad. So we're gonna just kind of pack it in and leave a little tiny bit of space at the top. This is a romaine, a spring mix is gonna work. I just like romaine, I think it does really well as a mason jar. I'm gonna add a damp paper towel or paper napkin and we're going to do that just to keep everything nice and fresh in the jar. I usually do these four or five at a time, so I have one to enjoy throughout the week. Put the lid on, put it in the fridge, and then you have a grab and go salad for your lunch that day. So when it's time to enjoy this for lunch, you just grab it, take it with you, put it in your cooler, your lunch sack, whatever or if you're eating at home, just grab it. And then obviously remove the paper towel. And then you're just going to pour it upside down. If you need to scrape out the dressing, you absolutely can do that. Of course, my skinny spinella or the regular spinella would work here. And then you have yourself this gorgeous salad. This is the other reason that we order it like this. We want the salad dressing to be on top as we scrape everything out. And then we have our perfect salad to enjoy for lunch. This is probably one of our most viral pieces of content in 2022, homemade freezer PBJs, also known as Uncrustables. I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do those. These are a great grab and go for lunch boxes, much cheaper than buying them already packaged up. I know that's easier, 
but this is cheaper. I have a creamy peanut butter. If you need to mix it up, go ahead and do that. Sometimes the oil separates and, and pools at the top and that is fine. Go ahead and just get, I would use a knife uh, or well, a knife or the spreader that we have and then you can use that to incorporate the oil that's on the top. This one is not very separated. I like to use creamy because it spreads easier, just easier to work with. And then I just have a fruit preserve or fruit spread. And my favorite bread for doing this is like a potato bread. It's a sandwich bread. It's a little bit thicker, heartier slices, and it just does really well as a freezer PBJ. Do not throw the bag away. We're going to reuse the bag after we have made all of our sandwiches. Um, we're going to make our sandwiches. Then we're going to stamp or seal our sandwiches and put them back into the bag with either a piece of cut parchment paper or a paper napkin in between each one. It makes, keeps them from sticking together. It makes it really easy to grab out of the baggie and then add into your lunchbox. So I'm going to set out my bread two together. You can save your, no, not everybody calls it a heel. We're gonna set that aside. You can save it. I actually have a bag in my freezer that has heels in it and I use that for making like egg casseroles at the holidays and stuff. I just keep them in my freezer. Peanut butter side, obvi. Jelly side, also obvi. I love this because of the rounded edge. It can scrape. It can also cut. I'm not gonna like cut myself, but like it can cut um, because it's just thin enough, even though it's plastic, it can still cut through the bread and the sandwich. So after you're done making it, you can use it to cut. I'm obviously not going to do that with these because I want them to be that circle sealed off shape, which we have a cutter tool that will help us both cut and seal the edges of the bread together. Knowing that we have to be careful of where we put the peanut butter and the jelly. I'm going to make this as if it were a normal sandwich. Um, in part because the edges then become my lunch. So we don't want that to go to waste. So I actually strategically try to like, I'll make some sandwiches for lunch and then I'll cut some for the freezer. And then we eat the scraps with lunch, if that makes sense. We don't want any of this to go to waste. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. We're actually going to do peanut butter in the case of a freezer PBJ. It is absolutely crucial. If you learn anything from anything here, the peanut butter has to go on both sides of the bread because the peanut butter, the oiliness of the peanut butter acts as a moisture barrier for the jelly and the bread. If the jelly comes in contact with the bread and then it gets frozen and then it starts to thaw out, guess what happens to the bread? There's water, more water in the jelly than there is in the peanut butter. The peanut butter is more oil-based. So we want that thick layer of peanut butter on both sides, especially if you're using the sandwich cutting tool. If you fill the inside too much, it will literally become a volcano. Uh, I, the thicker bread probably will not happen, but if you're using a thinner bread and you fill the inside um, too much and then you go to cut it, it will literally become like a little volcano. And while that's not the worst thing in the world, it's really difficult to freeze a sandwich like that. So again, centralized for the sandwich cutting tool. If you're not going to use a sandwich cutting tool and you're going to make a sandwich just like this, then you're going to want to go ahead and spread the peanut butter all the way to the edge. Almost done. I'm going to wipe the edge of this tool really clean. If you need to use a towel or rinse it off, you can, but then I'm going to switch sides and use the other side of my handy dandy scraper. Of course we have these in our shop, the peanut butter and jelly scraper. And that way I can switch to the jelly side. I don't get jelly in here. I don't get peanut butter in there. Very handy. Also has the cutter tool and just a quick little mix. This is only going on one side. We don't need to double up. These are going to be really thick sandwiches. And then after we close the sandwich, we're going to press the larger circle around to cut out the sandwich. And then there's the second piece of the sandwich sealer that you press in to create the 
ridges that make basically the sandwich seal together. And then you kind of wiggle it a little bit, then pull around the sides. Of course, the sides then become your snack. And then you can separate the sandwich out and then add it to the baggie. In between the sandwiches and the baggie, you can add a piece of parchment paper, wax paper, or a paper napkin. The paper napkin will help control a little bit of the liquid from any condensation that might be happening. And there you have your PBJs ready to grab from the freezer. I hope these two ideas help inspire and encourage you to get into your kitchen and making these and getting yourself set up for success when it comes to lunches in the next coming weeks. Please like this video if you learned something new. We share new ideas, cooking hacks, recipes, and such every week in the Learn to Cook on a Budget series. We release new episodes at noon central time on Wednesdays. If you wanna get notified when we have new episodes available, please click the subscribe button so you'll get that notification. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.